Hey everybody, this is Retro Revival, back with another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red. And indeed, we're gonna play Pokemon Fire Red this episode. Uh, the main focus of this episode is to cover the fact that half of um, the episode was not able to be recovered because the file corrupted, but it's all good because I'll tell you guys what happened. So we're in, uh, we're, I think we're in the, what do you call it, process of trying to get the silk scope or whatever, you know, where the Team Rocket people are all uh, trying to connive and stuff, and then at the end you get a Master Ball. But this is Pokemon Tower in, um, I think it's like, what town is it? Lavender or something? And, uh, so from next episode, we'll be doing the Sylph, uh, company one, where the Team Rocket people are all, uh, everywhere bombarding us, and, uh, they basically follow us from the Pokemon Tower all the way to that place, which is in Saffron City. And, um, yeah. And we get a Master Ball in the next episode, which, you know, the only one in the game. So it's pretty cool. I hope you guys enjoy. Stay tuned, and we will see how much the humans are, are, you know, able to do in human stuff. In other words, we'll see me uh, trying not to screw up and such things. Okay. And then my my Pokemon did not evolve for some reason. I don't know why it is not gonna evolve. But Mr. Fuji said, "Oh, I got uh, Fuji something." He said, "No, he didn't say that, but I just said that." Okay, he goes, um, "Oh, we can have a Poke Flute, so we can summon the Pokemon which is laying in the path." What a cool dude! Mr. Fuji is a pretty good man, man. Shout out to the Mr. Fuji man. Cause he's a good dude. And if you guys enjoy this, please like, share, and subscribe to help me reach more people. We're in Lavender Town, Route 8 right now. And yeah, so yeah, if you guys can help me uh, reach more people, I would appreciate it because, you know, hey, it'll be cooler then and you guys will be happier as well when I got more support behind me. But until then, we'll just hold it down like a boss does. And you know how we do it. So, our non-evolving Pokemon here doesn't seem to want to evolve very much. Perhaps the, uh, the Pokemon hates me. That's one of the possibilities. It must be uh, damn near mad at me or something. Because otherwise, why would he not evolve? Hey, Saffron City, we're in. So check it out, this is that building. Snore, he's taking the snooze, that guy said. So let's head into the office while that guy snoozes. And uh, we're gonna, it's basically, this thing is pretty easy. If you guys are doing this uh, maze here, it's very difficult in appearance, but it's not really. So you just need to go to uh, like, the, you know the floor, I think it's the fifth floor, or ninth or something, and then there's like, a Pokeball with the, uh, what do you call it, with the, uh, door key or whatever, card key it's called, and there is high, which is a Porygon, which we got at the Cerulean City Casino Gaming whereupon uh, we won this Pokemon. So I wonder why they traffic Pokemon out of their casino. You know what I'm saying? Let's just destroy the enemy here. Nothing normal, nothing abnormal. It's only the normalness. And then, yeah, next episode will be much better than this one because low-key I figured out a good idea. So I figured out a better way to uh, record the, the video and it's like easier for me so yeah you guys have probably noticed that I'll have quicker uh, produced videos because uh, 
it took me a while before since I was using a stupid program that came with Windows instead of one that, you know, probably costs a little bit, but I didn't spend a dime. But that's why I'm not going to mention it, because hey, uh, the pirates are nice, but not the three-piece suit wearing uh, liars who say, oh, just buy stocks and, you know, stuff. If it was a damn, uh, yeah. But yeah, everybody, I should write a book about, uh, a fake book, like not a real thing, you know? Because then they'll get me in trouble, but I, I thought of an idea, I should write a book about, like, people who understand that their government is a bunch of thieves, and then they arrest the people who are giving them all problems, and throw them in a gulag, and happily ever after. Wouldn't that be a good, you know, good, good little story for the Christmas season coming up? and Christmas and all that. It'd be perfect. And then, um, you know, we'll put a Christmas tree in the gulag, actually. Said the people who wrote the book that I'm writing about. I'm not gonna write a book about that, but I'm writing a book. It's just not about that. And, uh, it's not good. But it will be. So, hey everybody. We're just getting uh, in a battle right here. I thought that guy was a scientist. Didn't expect him to... Well, he is a scientist. It says Scientist Jerry. So I guess I was not wrong. But I assumed that he would not attack us. Because he was a fine old scientist. And so therefore, why would he attack somebody? My assumption proved to be a stupid one. And so we're fighting the guy who I didn't think would attack us because he was a scientist. Bite. And his magnemite, it got bit. And now it's on the ground. We gotta knock down the Pokeball type, uh, Voltorb guy. And we'll use Crumble Cookie Gaming, our, uh, what do you call this Pokemon here? I forget what it's called. I forget what that Pokemon's real name is. Gra Growlithe, and then the other one is like, um, Growlithe, and then the Evolution, I forget. I forget the name of it, but doesn't really make a difference. Kropotkin, our Drakini is going to be up against Magneton. And, uh, he's a good person, Kropotkin. And I think I'll name the... Oh, yeah, we get another Pokemon in uh, next episode. I think I have a good name for it. Because it's a Lapras, I think it's called. But I'm going to name it Emma. After Emma Goldman. Who is another exceptionally good writer who I think everybody would like. Emma Goldman, uh, she died in Toronto because she got kicked out of the United States for the land of free speech uh, because she was telling people there's no nation worth dying over in the middle of World War I or II. So free speech was never free, but people like Emma Goldman who got kicked out of her country because she didn't want uh, people to die for no reason, uh, she died up in Toronto. Uh, because the United States decided, hey, you don't think we should send people to go die? Well, you're not patriotic. And I guess patriotism is when you're willing to send everybody you love to the death cha chambers. Uh, so I'd prefer not to be a patriot, you know what I'm saying? I don't think any country is so good where people should say, oh, I want to die because of it. There's people who would say they disagree with me, of course, but their opinions don't matter for it's not their channel and stuff. So, you know, I get to put my view up there and screw whatever the warmongering uh, jarheads that, you know, 
Mr. Stupid University in Virginia where they've got all the people who are ready to go kill everybody overseas. They shouldn't, you know, just really chill it out, chill out, say, it's okay, we're not gonna attack Taiwan, we don't really care. Because why do we care about Taiwan anyways? Give me one reason. Do they have good orphanages that Bill Gates likes or something? Which, uh, he probably steals things out of, you know? But I don't even know. Let's go, okay, we got grammar here. We just knocked it down. Now we got an electrode, we're gonna knock it down. But next episode, we're gonna be cutting through stuff. I guarantee you guys are gonna be appreciating that one. Much more than this one, I know. So yeah. Um, we're almost halfway done this episode. And, um, yeah. I hope everybody's been having a good day. I hope also that everybody has a great day from here on forward. Uh, and a great month and everything like that. All the time. Because it's not good to wish bad upon people. That's what I've seen in my life. And, uh, yeah. Let's go. Electrode was wrapped by Kropotkin. Kropotkin is a good dude. So the state in its historic role. Okay, we're gonna go down to Porygon, who's the guy named Hi. And he's gonna be our dude. We're gonna use Psybeam, which is a pretty bright, powerful move. Got the guy to 28 levels. He's climbing the ladder. So, this little puzzle here is not that difficult, but I was confused here for a bit. Uh, the thing is, you'd want to go to the third floor to start, because that's one of the really only necessary ones. So if you're playing along, I would urge you to just go to the third level before uh, worrying about anything else. And uh, next episode, you'll see a full playthrough of like what happens. But yeah. Thank you guys for watching, and we're just gonna finish this battle, and then probably start to end it up. What happened? Oh, it just cut to the part that... Yeah, so I go into the, um, woman's house in Lavender Town to talk about a Marowak. Then here I go to name rate my Pokemon. I named Pikachu 9V because, well, I just named him 9V because 9V, you know what I mean? And, uh, it is a better name than before the name rate guy is right. I, I named the Cubo Nama, but I don't know if I'm gonna use it, so I'm gonna make sure I name one of my Pokemon that I use Emma, Emma after Emma Goldman. Because Emma Goldman was a good person. And unfortunately, they talk all types of trash about her name. They kicked her out of USA, as I said for not being pro-war and thus she was a Canadian uh, after being an American who came from Russia in the first place that's probably why they hated her in the beginning and then when she was able to think properly they probably got extra worried about it because she was smarter than any American uh, president you know what I mean or any American politician they're wearing suits because they're not smart. They're not wearing suits because they're smart. If they were smart, they wouldn't be in the spotlight. They'd be paying people to do that. That's how it goes. Like the Rothschilds and people like them, they can pay whoever they want. The Rockefellers as well. Uh, you know, big money names. They can buy damn near anything they want and get away with anything they want because um, 
Yeah, there's, well, yeah, I don't want to talk about uh, rich people because, you know, they're not even worth the two seconds it takes to spit on their names. But listen, we're going to uh, go up this here and uh, we'll end the video in a little bit. But let's see if we can find any more Pokemon battles to engage in before we uh, end this episode. And I'm thinking there's not many. Uh, the maze is easy. That guy tells us no, it's not, but yes, it is. Okay, what do I think of the maze? It's pretty easy. Just, um, why is that guy asking me what I think of the maze? I don't know. We're gonna continue. Uh, this person seems scared or something. They're hiding behind a desk, so I would reckon they don't know anything about it. We're just gonna leave out of this place, then go up towards the teleport spot there, or not. Maybe this one there. Uh, yeah, the third floor is the most important in that building, if you need to know, like, for your, your video game. Just go down to the third floor, and, uh, next episode I'll show you how we trigger the events which occur from here on. Which is like a battle with our rival, and then also Giovanni, who gives us, uh, something. Then, uh, there's another person who gives us a Pokemon. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And we're on the 10th floor basement right now. Uh, yeah, we're gonna end the video right here. Uh, shout out to you guys. Stay smart, stay strong, and, uh, you know, uh, have a great day everybody. Peace. And we'll talk to you guys soon. I'll be back with uh, another episode very soon, probably. Peace.